Welcome to Around Kids App. We are at the Bloedel Reserve today, and if you have not seen this, you must please take advantage of this beautiful garden. We're on Bainbridge Island, Washington, and we are in the guest house, the Japanese guest house, and outside, of course, are the Japanese gardens. We're gonna get into that in just a few minutes, but joining me to start our program is Ed Moydell. Ed is the executive director here at the Bloedel Reserve, and thank you, Ed, for number one, accommodating us today and being so welcoming and for your time today, I appreciate it. Absolutely, it's my, my pleasure to have you here. What a fabulous place to work. It really is, <laughs> it really, really is. We're very it, lucky. You are very, very lucky. Ed, tell us about your background. How long have you been at Bloedel? What other kind of work have you done? Um, I've been here six years. I've been the executive director for five years. Um, actually, as of yesterday, it was five years. Um, and uh, I arrived in 2009 as the associate director in charge of membership, fundraising, and guest services, and then took over in April of 2010 as the executive director. Um, before that, um, I'd gotten really interested in public gardens from an early age, and um, after inheriting a lawn mowing business from my brother, I turned it into sort of a design build company for the cul-de-sac, nice. and then went to um, Votech, and then undergraduate for public horticulture, and then graduate school for public garden management. Um, oh, this is your ba you, this mm -hmm. is your whole bailiwick. Yep, very lucky. Very mm -hmm. wonderful. Where did you go to school? Oklahoma State University for undergrad, University of Delaware through Longwood Gardens for graduate school. I've heard of the Longwood Gardens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, yeah. it's a beautiful place. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Wow. So tell us about how many staff members. Let's um, kind of outline mm -hmm. who's who works at the Bloedel and the different responsibilities. Mm -hmm. We have 32 staff members. We have 13 of them that are full-time uh, ground staff members, horticulturists mm -hmm. that take care of the grounds. Mm -hmm. um, then we have uh, several people that work in guest services that welcome folks when they come in. We have about five of those. We have people that work with membership, um, fundraising, finance, the back office stuff that makes everything work. Mm -hmm. We have a volunteer uh, director as well. Um, and our staff numbers have almost doubled within the last five years. Mm -hmm. Lots of folks um, to keep the place beautiful, mm -hmm. number one, and welcoming, and then also that are doing the hands-on and uh, actually physically welcoming people That's and right. interacting with folks mm -hmm. as they stroll through the gardens and yes. everything. We, all, we also have a few staff members that are dedicated to uh, putting on programs and events mm -hmm. to welcome out people more actively. Yeah, 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 and we're gonna meet Coram and mm -hmm. some of the other folks that work with the volunteers. Ed, what's your favorite spot here? Hard to say, um, but I think probably the moss garden and the reflection pool, the two of those are uh, adjacent to each other. Mm -hmm. Moss garden is about as uh, natural as it gets, and then the reflection pool is about as geometric and formal as it gets, mm -hmm. and there's something special that happens when you go from one landscape to the next. Mm -hmm. That transition is mm -hmm. pretty powerful. Yeah, I agree, I agree. The reflecting pool is my favorite mm -hmm. spot, I just, I remember the very first time I walked into it, it was, it, it just got me. Mm -hmm. it, that's, that's when you know, yeah. that's Speak, when you it know. It speaks to you. It spoke to me, absolutely. Um, Ed, share with us the history. Who lived here? How did the Bloedel Reserve come into being? The Bloedel Reserve, at least the, the parts that people experience, uh, that dates back to the early 1930s. So the large manor house that serves as our visitor center that was built between 1929 and 1931 by Angela Collins. She was the wife of the fourth mayor of Seattle, who was John Collins. Uh, she was a widow at the time when the house was built. Um, she actually had it built as a summer house, um, and she spent the summers here for about a decade or so, um, from 31 to the early 40s. Um, and then uh, the Blodells, who are our founders, they purchased the property in 1951. They thought, this is nice enough to live in year round. <laughs> So they put a couple years into retrofitting the place and then moved in in 1953 and spent about the next 30 years full time on the property here. Um, so M Mr. Blodell, um, he was the reluctant heir to his dad's timber fortune. His dad was for all intents and purposes a timber baron. Um, mm -hmm. And when he was looking for somebody to take over the family business, he talked to different family members and people just, just didn't really resonate with him. Mr. Blodell at the time, was a, he was a teacher. He was a teacher at the school that he attended as a boy. He was a, a math teacher. 
And so he reluctantly took over the company, but he was interested in numbers, he was interested in math, and he was interested in conservation. So what he did, which was um, very unusual at the time, is he took over the company business with a conservation ethic in mind. So he was one of the first people to run his factories off of sawdust, um, and he replanted areas that had been clear cut um, and was really a pioneer in the conservation movement. Great. Um, and then he quietly retired in 1951. At an early age, he was only 51 when he retired. And then he purchased this place along with his wife, Virginia, and set about making um, a series of landscapes that really reflected what he thought our role was uh, as humans in relationship to the natural environment. So they built a lot of distinct landscape experiences, large ponds. They built this guest house in the Japanese garden that surrounds it. They expanded the property from about 67 acres to 150 acres that we have now. Um, and they um, developed several different landscape experiences in partnership with different architects and designers. Mm -hmm. um, and then later on in life, they realized that this belonged to the community. So they wanted to uh, set this up for public use. Um, we put together a master plan to really connect all those spaces together in a way that made sense. Um, and we opened up to the public in 1988, and we've been open now for 27 years as a nonprofit. 27 years? Mm -hmm. We actually look a little older than that, but. Yeah, but. Things mature quickly around here. Yeah, yeah. It's a, just 150 acres. Mm -hmm. Absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, in what year? Blodell was um, specifically reservation only, mm -hmm. correct? Um, what year did that change and now you don't need a reservation? When That's did right. that happen? So the reservation system uh, started in 1988 when we opened up to the public. Mm -hmm. And the idea behind that was when you come here, um, we, you really want to feel like you have the place to yourself so you can have an experience that connects you with nature. Mm -hmm. um, and so 20 people a half hour were limited to come in and it really did work. I mean, when you came in, you felt like you had the place to yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you did kind of have the place to yourself and we wanted to open it up to the community and develop more ownership and, and uh, allow people to come in more easily. So in 2010, that was discontinued. And so now you can come. We're open more often. We're open more hours. We're open Tuesday to Sunday. Um, 10 to 4, and then we have extended hours in the summer. We're open until 6, Thursday through Sunday. Absolutely. And have you seen more people using the garden mm -hmm. without, since the reservation system is gone? Yes. Yeah, people are really excited to be here. Um, and mm -hmm. our attendance has almost doubled um, from about 25,000 to just under 50,000. And most of the time, nice. the, the good news is most of the time you really wouldn't know it. It doesn't feel that much different, mm -hmm. but you feel like you uh, can come whenever you want to and like you belong here. Right. It is, it is a fabulous, fabulous place. Um, we're on Bainbridge Island on Dolphin Drive. Could you share the actual address, please? It's 7571 uh, Northeast Dolphin Drive. We're just on the turn uh, on Agate Wood on Highway 305. Right. So if you're coming from um, across the bridge, you're going to turn left on Agate Wood. Yeah, if you're coming from the north, from Polesville, you'd Correct. turn left. If you're heading over on the ferry, then mm -hmm, you'd, mm -hmm. you'd turn right. Very, very easy to find. Mm -hmm. And once you get here, you'll be amazed at what is here. Um, Ed, what, why does this garden differ from other public gardens that folks might visit mm -hmm. and might know about mm -hmm. if you say their names? How is, how is Blodell different? It's something that you, you sort of feel it when you get here, but I can try to describe it as best as I can. Um, most gardens that you go to, uh, there's um, labels on the plants. Mm -hmm. It's very much a scientifically oriented experience. Mm -hmm. um, here mm -hmm. at the reserve, our founders were really interested in the interaction between people and landscapes and about what happened when you were outdoors. And they saw that as something that was really connected more with the emotions. It was almost like the experience of landscape as art. And the idea that when you come to a place like this, you can leave behind all your worries. You could walk through uh, landscapes and you can feel something. You can feel closer to something, mm -hmm. um, closer to something more important or to somebody that you're with or more in touch with things that maybe you don't commonly get to. Um, and so uh, that's the overall idea behind this place. So as a result of that, there's no signage on any of the plants. There's no directional signage. And I think part of the idea with that is this is one of the few places where you can get lost and it's okay because maybe when you get lost, you might find something you weren't expecting. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we don't have any signage and, and it's intended to be a way to um, connect you with the things that matter. 
Um, and I remember uh, the first time that I came here, it was something that I've been to some of the most beautiful places all over the world. And in their own right, they're absolutely exquisite. But there was something about this here that um, really meant something to me. Just from the moment I stepped foot on the property, I could feel what it was all about. And I would encourage people that haven't been here before that come here and you'll, you'll get what I'm talking about. Yeah, you'll get it. You'll get it as you get lost mm -hmm. in this fabulous garden, which you really, you're happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who cares if you're lost? Yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. spot. You can only get so lost. Yeah. Ed, thank you so much for your time and for your stewardship of this beautiful, beautiful reserve. And we do want to encourage folks, please come and visit the Blow Dell Reserve on Bainbridge Island. You will not be disappointed. Thanks so much hey, for joining us. Thank you so much. Us. It was a pleasure. Stay with us. We're going to talk to Andy Navage next. Andy's in charge of horticulture at the reserve. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Around Kitsap. We're in beautiful Blodell Reserve and we are outside the Japanese guest house in the Japanese garden. Joining me is Andy Navage. Andy is the director of horticulture. I am. At the Blodell Reserve. Andy has a long history here at Blodell. When did you start? Um, I came in 1993 as a uh, student intern, was offered a job for um, after my school was done and decided to work for a year, then go back to school and just never went back to school. So I've been <laughs> here ever since. But Andy is a plant guy and knows every species, every plant, you know, every nook and cranny of this beautiful, beautiful location. Most definitely obsessive compulsive. <laughs> um, we were talking about the beautiful plants that I'm um, looking at. Andy, what is your favorite spot in this paradise? Uh, being a plant guy, I'm, I'm, I'm totally in love with the rhododendron glen. It's the, the one area where is by far the biggest diversity of plant material in the, in the garden. So it Great. looks good all year long. It's always beautiful. Let's talk about um, the number of people that work in the horticulture department. How many folks do you have working here? Um, there's 13 full-time gardeners at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, in the summer, we'll have a we have a high school internship program, so we'll take in three to five students in the summer, and then mm -hmm. we have a number of volunteers that help out in the, mm -hmm. the garden. How many volunteers on a, any given day are actually helping doing the maintenance and care um, of the plants? There's, there's typically one or two that come out mm -hmm. during during the day. Mm -hmm. So Andy, when you started as a um, high school intern, did you like plants already? Or was Almost this a Almost certainly, I already did? knew exactly what I wanted. Did you? So that was That's why great. I was here. That's great. Was it something that you like grew up with? Your parents were into plants, your grandma, your grandpa? Uh, yeah. my, my grandparents were, but it just, I mean, I grew up on Bainbridge, essentially where Island Wood is at the moment. So mm -hmm. I would run across the Spagnum Bogs and just found it fascinating. That's very cool, very cool. So once again, we're at the Japanese guest house in the Japanese garden, and these have been refurbished in the last few years. They have. Tell us, let's talk about the house first. What was done? Um, the, the house was built originally as a uh, guest house in the 60s and all of the decor was from 1960s so this originally still had this the same appliances um, not very many people ever stayed in it for the last 20 or 30 years so we removed the bedrooms made it a, a, a more open footprint updated the upholstery the mm -hmm. uh, service sorts of things the appliances and such had a uh, Japanese woodworker come in, do a number of things on the, on the trim, redo the soji screens, mm -hmm. and really just update it to current times and current uses, which is primarily for fundraising events and meetings and mm -hmm. things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. How about the garden itself? Tell us what transformed out here. 
a lot of things have happened in the garden over the last three or four years. We received grants from the Seattle Garden Club, the Tadeucci Foundation to address a lot of different things, deferred maintenance and mm -hmm. um, things of that nature. But the way that the garden developed, originally the lower stroll garden was installed, then the house was put in. And when the house was put in, there was a swimming pool Oh. So once the swimming pool was not needed, the, the dry garden was, was put in. So it was this kind of patchwork of, of gardens and no real effort was put into tying the various gardens together. So most of our work was in the transitional zones. So from the orchid woods to the Japanese garden, from the upper garden to the lower garden. So we installed a new set of stairs on both sides of the guest house just to make for better flow since we're we're open to the public more we redid the entry gate all the beds around the entry re-sculpted and replanted all of the the mounds so a lot of it was just freshening things up and making traffic flow a lot a lot easier mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the major things we did was move this um, large pine from the gatehouse down, which anchored the gate quite nicely. Beautiful, beautiful. And the black mondo grass, is that yes, what it's called? it is. I love it. Um, it's, just, so, it's, it's so beautiful striking. Plant. It's um, so striking as you come up that path. Beautiful. Yeah, I really like it. It just drags your eye down. Yes, it down does. Yes, it does. Um, Andy has designed most of the gardens here. Well, things well, the, that were the, intact. The, the, in terms of the renovations. Right, yes. right. Andy, what's your favorite thing about design? Is it color? Is it texture? What, what, um, what's your favorite thing? It's meshing various different planes and textures together. You're um, an artist. He's an artist, he's a scientist. I, I like taking old things and making them look better. Um, so like none of the, the, the bones of the garden have really changed all mm -hmm. that much. It's just mm -hmm. adjusting to, to current needs. Mm -hmm. In terms of the Japanese garden, the, the, probably the biggest thing that we've done is actually just remove things. Mm -hmm. Simplify, mm -hmm. simplify, simplify. Mm -hmm. Andy, thanks so much for joining me today. You My did a, pleasure. You did a great job. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Around Kitsap. We have moved to my favorite spot in the Bloedel Reserve. It is the reflecting pool. It is it's magical here. The very first time I walked into this spot, which is probably 10 years ago, it was, oh, you get the woo-woos, you know, you just feel it. With me is Coram Bischoff. Coram, you Hi. have been so helpful. Coram was my contact and got us all set up to come out and enjoy this beautiful spot. Thank Happy you. Happy to have you here. Thank you. Coram is Director of Communications. Yeah, and events. And events, That's fun right. thing here at the Bloedel Reserve. Coram, tell us a little bit about your background. Sure. I came here from the circus and live entertainment world and... Uh, wanted to be closer to home and um, wanted to continue providing people with transformative experiences. So this was a perfect <laughs> place for me. So when you talk about transformative yeah. experiences, yeah. where did you used to work? Tell I us. used to work at Teatro Zanzani, which is a circus and dinner theater in Seattle. Mm -hmm. And bumper shoot. Yeah, and bumper and, shoot and summer nights at the pier. Yeah. And yeah. Really fun yeah. things. Really, really <laughs> fun things. So now you do this um, creative events yeah. and um, communications for this fabulous, yeah. fabulous location. Tell us, we have to ask the question first, mm -hmm. what's your favorite spot? My favorite spot here is probably the Moss Garden. Mm -hmm. which right now in the spring is the best time to be here, especially yeah. early spring. So um, I just love it. it's magical. And, and when I bring my kids here, they, they go right into their imaginations and think of the fairies and fairies elves and that are animals. living in the trees and in the stumps. Yeah, very, very awesome. 
So there are some great events here at Bloedel yeah. and they're seasonal. So let's talk about spring. What's sure. going on in the spring? This year, we've got a, a our first ever poetry installation. So it's called Poetry at Bloedel. And we have 21 poems installed around the grounds mm -hmm. with uh, nice. that were all selected for particular spots for particular reasons. And so when you come here, you can really connect with nature in a new way. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And then, Beautiful. of course, as far as the gardens go, we've got the rhododendron glen is in bloom. Mm -hmm. And our we call it our secret season, really, is kind of mid-March through mid-May. And that's the time when... Uh, the, we have the most flowers blooming and the mm -hmm. most color around the mm -hmm. reserve. Mm -hmm. Love it, love yeah. it, love it, love it. Um, how about summer? Summer probably is busy and Summer active. is a busy time and it's of course gorgeous here then too, but it's, um, it's not so flowery. You get every shade of green you could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, all kinds of events throughout the summer. We have outdoor concerts. We work with Bainbridge Performing Arts to put on Shakespeare in the Park. Um, right. This nice. year we're doing a mid Midsummer Night's Dream, and nice. we so uh, we we'll also have our family day and summer uh, kids workshops, guided walks. We have our big annual fundraiser called the Garden Party. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a really busy time here mm -hmm. for us and also for the grounds in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fall is a magical time, and I bet there's yeah. lots of beautiful color throughout yeah. the reserve. And are there activities and things that people can enjoy? Yeah, fall is beautiful. the The meadow looks great, and the Japanese garden is with all the Japanese maples mm. looks looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's probably the best time, in my opinion, the best time to mm -hmm. see the Japanese garden. Mm. Um, and we also do an annual event called a squash hunt. Super Squash Scavenger Hunt is its full name, and our our horticulture staff spends the summer growing thousands and thousands of different types of squash and pumpkins. Cool. And then um, they hide them around in different displays around the reserve, and families come out with a little map and and see you know hunt for the, cool. the different squash. Oh, that's get great. a little prize at the end. That's really great. Yeah. I bet it's really fun to be here in the winter. And how about when it snows? I bet it's just. I'm still beautiful. waiting for a yeah. snow day. <laughs> yeah. The days it snowed has been on the weekend, which is good because I don't have to try to drive to work. But right, right. I really want to see it myself in the snow. I've seen pictures mm -hmm. and it does look beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, we have the, one of my favorite parts about the winter is that. All the leaves are off the trees and so you get peaks into parts of the gardens that you don't get during the summer and the, mm -hmm. and the fall mm -hmm. and it's some some of the best time to just really um, kind of appreciate some of the the more subtle plants that we have here mm -hmm. um, and then we also have an, an event, of course, in the winter. Oh, <laughs> what's that? Which is our holiday village, and so oh, we cool. we have a volunteer who spent decades building miniature houses, and we set them all up in the visitor center uh, with model trains, and we Very have nice. music and cider, and so it's a an indoor experience mm -hmm. that you can come with your family and enjoy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Coram, again, thank you so much for thank you. helping us yeah. today and being our uh, conduit to get here and yeah. making it so um, pleasant oh. and seamless. And we've had a great time. Thank you very, thank you. very much. Thank you. Hope to see you again. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Stay with us. We're going to talk about volunteerism and getting involved at the Bloedel. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Around Kitsap. Our final segment is with Andre Tendam. Andre is the Director of Volunteerism and Guest Services. Did I say that right? Yep, you said that correct. Thanks. So Andre, tell us a little bit about your background. How long have you been at Bloedel? What other kind of work have you been involved in? Well, I've been here at Bloedel uh, about four years now. Uh, I started as a volunteer actually at, at Bloedel Reserve in nice. the gardens. And uh, I came here visiting once um, with my mother-in-law, who is a master gardener, and I, I just fell in love with the place. And I thought I want to volunteer here. And from one thing came the other. Now I am. Now you're in charge of them. In charge of them and uh, guest services and all kind of other things. Wow. Yep. And I came from the Netherlands five years ago. I immigrated here. 
well, to the wonderful. United States. Yep. And you came right to Bainbridge? Uh, yes. Uh, well, my wife, she's a United States citizen, uh -huh. and uh, she lived in Seattle at the time I met her, and um, she had family here on the island. Great. So that's why we, at the end, ended you got up here. finding a little cabin here. Yeah. Nice. What a great spot. I couldn't imagine coming to work here every day, Andre. It's uh, so beautiful. And I know you've got to do some office time, but you can also take walks around and find a quiet little outdoor office, I'm sure. Do that's, some work. That's right. It's, it's pretty special here. Yeah, it is. Very. What is your favorite spot on the, on the reserve? Uh, well, I don't really have a favorite spot. Um, it really depends on uh, the season and uh, uh, depending on that, there's different spots that I like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Yeah, that's great. So let's talk about volunteerism, Andre, and how many currently are on the rolls for volunteering? Well, a little bit over 150 volunteers we have currently on the road. That's roads. a lot to juggle. That's so right. So some have, they want to help in the garden, maybe they want to talk to people. Is there an interview process or is it a questionnaire? How do folks get involved? Um, well, folks can get involved by or giving me a, giving me a call or go to, to our website and I can give the information later for that. Mm -hmm. And um, how to reach me and go to and how to, f to find a section on the website. And um, when they, um, usually you can s fill out the application form on the website and then I receive it uh, the, for the application form and I will give a call to the person who would like to become a volunteer and um, we make a walk through the gardens, that's what we usually do. Oh and nice! we talk about um, um, what I do, I, I give a little introduction and uh, also get to know the volunteer better and find out what he or she likes because mm -hmm. that's the most important thing I think mm -hmm. to find out nice. uh, really what you like to do and mm -hmm. then well you would like to come back then. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah that's really excellent. Um, so is there a need for more volunteers? Are you currently recruiting? Yes we are. Uh, there is a need for more volunteers and uh, we are currently recruiting yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Mostly to work in all aspects of the garden, to work um, greeting people, do you want gardeners? What are you looking for? Um, so we look, yeah, well that's, yes actually. We uh -huh. look for uh, people in the gardens um, uh, you c from Monday to Friday and in the morning and in the afternoon. We look for people and um, the gardens uh, are, uh, you can kind of choose as a volunteer where you want to volunteer in the garden. So if mm -hmm. you would like the Japanese garden, you can volunteer in the Japanese garden. If you like the Rhododendron Glen, you can volunteer in the Rhododendron Glen. Great. And then there is positions um, in guest services, uh, people, greet people at the gate. Mm -hmm. We have a new ambassador position at the, at the gatehouse. Um, that's to help visitors uh, with wayfinding, to help to guide people and uh, also help people um, figuring out a f fun walk if they don't have time to do the whole reserve. Oh, great. And then we have people in the, do in the house, in the, in the, in the former Bloedel residence. Um, there's docents there. So yeah, in all those places we need... Uh, you need folks. We need volunteers. Yep. Yeah, excellent. So if you're interested, number one, in checking out this beautiful reserve, um, go to the website and help us with the website, please. It's www.blodelreserve.org. Very good, very good. On that website are directions to get here. If you're interested in volunteering, um, you can hear about events. Yeah, Everything you need to know. Yeah, if you're interested in volunteering, go to join support. And then there's a section in the, on the website and then to volunteer. And then um, you will find information about current positions and also how to apply. That's all, all in there. All in that spot. And they Excellent. can call me too. Can I give the phone number? Please do. It's 206-842-7631, extension number 14. And then you will get me on the phone. And you'll talk to Andre. If not, I will call you back if you leave a voice <laughs> message. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Andre, for your time today. Yeah, you're and welcome. please come and check out the Bloedel Reserve, this beautiful jewel in Kitsap County. We're um, on Bainbridge Island on Dolphin Drive. Please check it out, www.blodellreserve.org. And thanks for joining us on Around Kitsap. We'll see you next time.